just running through my mind Wonder if there's peace to I can find Instead of always being on the ground I need a new purpose I'm looking for so much more Don't leave me here searching You're just what I'm longing for When times are getting crazy Everything seems hazy Is there some place for safe I can go? Run away, run away, run away To your escape Run away, run away, run away Hello, Bitful family. My name is Carlos, and I'm here with Lupe. And she's gonna be sharing with us how she came to Bethel and how she got involved in our ministries. Mi nombre es Lupe Estrada, y por primera vez yo llegué aquí a la iglesia buscando un lugar donde congregarme con los los tres nietos que yo tengo. Ay, me encontré con Cindy y ella me explicó muchas cosas, verdad, para congregarme. Me mantiene el ver el cambio en los niños. Ajá, que ellos han aprendido cosas que no sabían. Y eso es lo que me mantiene domingo a domingo levantándome temprano, que me gusta para mí temprano. <risa> a mí tampoco. <risa> okay. Aunque no, no sé mucho inglés, pero siempre verá cuando entro, le pido a Dios que me dé sabiduría y entendimiento para comprender lo que el pastor dice. Uh -huh. Y me gusta su enseñanza, la música uh -huh. ajá, y la convivencia que hay aquí. ¿Qué es lo que usted hace para poder traer a sus nietos a la iglesia los domingos en la mañana y, y los jueves al, al grupo juvenil? Pues los domingos casi siempre ellos están aquí, ¿verdad? Porque... Okay. Pero los jueves no, yo tengo que ir a Guapato a levantar a Tristan, traerlo a su servicio aquí con el, este, Joe. Y ya después cuando termina su servicio yo tengo que regresarlo de nuevo a Guapato. Guapato, ¿cuánto, cuánto se hace de manejar? Ah, de, aquí ah, de aquí para Guapito, Guapato son como 45 minutos yo creo. Ajá. Okay. Ajá, ya lo dejo allá y yo me regreso. Y usted trabaja, ¿verdad? Sí, ¿Sí? trabajo todos los días. Wow. Limpio wow. casa, porque si alguien quiere que le limpie su casa. <risa> Ajá, limpio casa, trabajo todos los días, pero yo siempre les he dicho, ¿verdad? Y le he dicho a Tristan, uh, si mami no quiere ir por ti, es ok, yo puedo, yo puedo sí. venir a traerte y puedo venir a llevarte. Yo no, okay. no, no quiero que pierdas. Si tú quieres ir a la reunión de los jóvenes, con Joe, yo te puedo venir a levantar y te puedo venir a dejar. Cuando venimos, ¡ah, oh, está Betel! Dicen. <risa> <risa> ellos, ellos han cambiado mucho y se les mira el... Como que ellos se, ahorita empezaron a conocer verdaderamente a Dios. Mm. Uno a veces no le puede dejar a sus hijos o a sus nietos riquezas, casas, mm -hmm. carros, dinero en el banco. Pero yo creo que aunque usted los enseñe a amar a Dios, es la riqueza más grande que uno le puede claro. dejar a los hijos y a los nietos, ¿verdad? Claro que sí. Ah, y eso es lo que yo quiero, que ellos aprendan a amar a Dios y a temer a Dios para cuando ellos se encuentren en un momento de que alguien quiera tentarlos a hacer algo malo, el temor a Dios mm. los haga re retroceder y no aceptar lo malo. Mm. Wow. I'm Chris Franz and this is my wife Ruth. Hello. And uh, we've been coming to Bethel for about seven years or so. Well, for my part, one of the things that I've seen you guys go through is a lot of our leadership pipeline in our small group ministry. And so I uh, just want to kind of help people get kind of a, a general recap of what that process has looked like and how that's gone for you. And so uh, it, it typically starts with Rooted. And the first kind of step in that journey was saying yes to being a Rooted facilitator. So how, how did that come about? What made you guys say yes to that? Uh, <laughs> Terry, Terry, Terry for yes. <laughs> and uh, that that was that was really all it took. Uh, you know, we we prayed about it. I, I talked to our original rooted facilitator, and just after having those conversations, decided, yeah, we we want to do it. Quite honestly, when we facilitated, um, we didn't even think that our group wanted to s stick with us. Right, and they did. Yeah. So that was awesome. <laughs> 
how prepared did you guys feel to step in as small group leaders? Yeah, each of us were in the Army for 12 years and we have been through leadership training and we've led people before, but as far as leading a small group, just felt really ill-equipped to do it. Yep. Yeah, well, I mean, we have our own walk with the Lord and mm -hmm. trying to understand all the things and are we prepared to be able to do that with other adults, right? Yep. And so when we told you that we were, you know, we were going to stick together, you know, the first thing was like, okay, how can we help you? And so then the next step was we paired you up in our mentorship mm -hmm. process and you guys were paired up with Dawson to do uh, the small group mentoring. So what was that experience like? How did that go? What are some of the things you guys learned from that? Each week that we met had a specific, I guess, number module. of- Yeah, it was a module, mm -hmm. questions from the chapters that we were gonna be yeah. reading, mm -hmm. and we would go through them together. And what was nice about it, because as we were going through the, the book, it answered the questions that I had as far as how to lead the group. Right. You, we, ha we have to be good listeners. Just stop and just listen. Man, if you could look at somebody who maybe isn't quite sure if they're ready to take that step. If it's on your mind, if it's on your heart, pray about it. I would say... Just say yes. <laughs> yeah, just say just yes. Just say yes. Even if you feel yeah. ill-equipped or you're like, oh, I, I don't think this is right for me or I, I don't think that I'm, you know, uh, worthy or whatever, say yes. Because we're not doing this alone. And I would say... Uh, reach out, um, whether it's, you know, an, an email or filling out a connect card mm -hmm. and just say, I'm I'm kind of interested in serving or leading, but I don't know what it looks mm -hmm. like. Yeah. Oh, I think that's great advice. Yeah. Yeah. And come and First see step. us. If you see us walking around the church, yes. come, come see us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, and exactly. Yeah. Ask some other people what that experience was like and get more details and information and maybe find the courage to take that next step forward. just want to address everyone in the room. Good morning, Bethel Richland. Good morning. Good morning, Imago Day Church, formerly known as West Pasco Bethel. Good to see you guys here. Thanks for coming. And not to leave out our Prosser congregation who's joining us live stream. Uh, we can't see you, but it's good to be with you. Uh, I hear that your campus pastor and his wife just brought a new child into the world. So congratulations to you guys. She's pretty cute. You chose a good, church, a good time to come to church this week. It's a fun celebration where we're looking back at what God has done and looking ahead to what God is doing. And just want to offer again, if you're here visiting or if you are been coming for a while, but you're not a member of Bethel, please stick around. You can hang out during a business meeting and then we're gonna have some fun in the back with food and, and fun in the sun. So please join us. It's a good chance to get to know what we're about here at Bethel. So my job this morning is to kind of give us a look back and a look ahead. And, I, and as I was thinking about this this last week, I was just remembering where we were this time last year. If you can just remember. We were, a business meeting was in July, but almost a year ago today, we were saying goodbye to our senior pastor, Jason, who took a call in South Carolina. We were uh, saying goodbye, not for good to Stephen Wallace, but to our executive pastor who had served us for a number of years and felt a calling to go serve as a mental health counselor. And so he's been doing that for a year and getting trained. But we say goodbye to both our executive pastor and our senior pastor in one month. And West Pasco, I was your campus pastor for a couple of years and got called here. And so you were without a campus pastor until Matthew came and filled in as an interim, I believe in November. It was an interesting time, wasn't it? I'm gonna be honest with you. I took the call to be your lead pastor, felt that that was what God was leading us to do and leading our church to do. But I honestly didn't know where we would all be today. You know, we, we faced a lot of change just in one year, not to mention it came on the heels of the pandemic that really shook the global church and did not leave out Bethel Church, right? Shook us up, lots of transitions. I wondered, I knew we'd be a church, but I didn't know what that church would look like. I didn't know what we would weather. 
I didn't know what it would be like to stand here today and address you and to look, do a look back at what God had done. Uh, talking to a, a guy who does works with a lot of churches throughout our country, and he was taking a look at Bethel and, and telling me and some of our leadership what he thought and evaluating. And he said that it is not common for a church to experience so many prevailing headwinds as Bethel has experienced simultaneously over the last few years. He says he hardly ever sees it and was shocked at the way that God has kept us together as a body and the way that God has continued to move in and through us as a church, despite all the changes. And I think that that is a testimony that we are here today to celebrate in in Prosser, here in Richland together with both congregations, that God is faithful, isn't he? God's good, yeah. I think it's also a testimony to the resiliency of all of you that call Bethel home and now Imago Day Church. The resiliency of you that continue to follow after Christ, stick together with your community of faith, no matter what's going on, that you are here today to celebrate what God has done around you and in you. I've seen it in our congregation. I've seen it on, with the amazing staff that leads all three of our congregations. I've seen it with a fairly new elder board that has stepped in to lead this body. It's been an awesome year with some difficult and some change for sure, but God has been faithful in and through us. So I want to take a look back just to kind of stretch out the last year and, and, and dip in and see what God has done with the help of the prophet Haggai. If you remember last September, we jumped into this book called Haggai, A Small Minor Prophet, because the book is so relevant to not just the church everywhere, but to our church this past year. And we spent a month looking at Haggai and, and, and looking at what it means for us. Haggai is coming to a group of people called Israel who have just come back from exile. A number of decades before, the Babylonians, the Assyrians came and ripped the people of God out of their home, tore the temple down, tore their homes down, and they lived apart from their home for a number of years. And then God comes and he brings Israel back to Jerusalem, back to the Holy Land, and he begins to start their life over again. Calls them to rebuild his house, calls them to to restart their life, to start fresh. It was definitely a season of transition, just like we have found ourselves in a lot in the last few years. And come to find out Israel is not much different than we are and just humanity is, that when big things happen, transitions come, challenges come, we can tend to go sideways. We can tend to freak out sometimes and maybe we lose our true north. For some of us, we, in moments of panic, we turn inward and we just kind of focus on ourselves and surviving. Some of us become reactionary and we, we kind of lose our mind a little bit and we're just, we're making all of our decisions, not really based on wisdom, but just on what makes sense in the moment and how we can protect ourselves. We might drift a bit and go sideways. There's a number of things that can go on. Israel was the same. They came home And they started building their own homes and forgot about God's house. And so God sends Haggai to Israel to remind them about their priorities. Haggai 1, this is what it says. The Lord of armies says this. These people say the time has not come for the house of the Lord to be rebuilt. The word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai saying, is it a time for you to yourselves to live in your paneled houses while this house lies in ruins? few verses later, it says, the Lord of armies says this, think carefully about your ways, go up into the hills, bring down lumber and build the house. And I will be pleased with it and be glorified. All right, so Haggai is coming on behalf of the Lord saying, Israel, like you're back in the land, you're back with the Lord. Yes, there's a lot of change happening. It doesn't look the way it used to when you used to live here, but I want you to get to work. Take your focus off your paneled houses Take your focus off all the other things. I want you to prioritize God and his house and his kingdom. He will come and he will bless that and he'll be with you in all of your endeavors. Focus on God's house. So we received that message as a church at all three of our campuses. What does it look like in the midst of change and transition, not just in our church, but in our lives to put our focus on God, to prioritize him and his kingdom and to let him work. And we, with the best of our ability, put our focus on God, starting back in September. Lord, what do you want to do in our midst? What is that going to look like? And we've already seen a video with two examples of the way the Lord is moving as we prioritize God in his house this last year. Looking back to the fall, we had uh, river baptisms with the Richland campus and Imago Dei, and there were about 50 baptisms, death to life stories, people's lives being changed here at Bethel. 
In October, we had local fest at all three of our campuses. And it, I know at all three was a great turnout. We had a number of people in the hub signing up for ministries. Angie reports there's one of our partners that actually this last year, one of their main core teams is made up of Bethel people who signed up that day to be a part of the local mission of God. Here at Bethel, God brought two next-gen directors, one to Prosser and Joe Tips. You guys can go ahead and give Joe Tips a round of applause. Joe is awesome. Prosser has been waiting for someone to come and build that community in the next gen of Prosser. Joe has come and he has, I think, done more than they expected in just the time he's been here. Here at the Richland campus, God brought back to us James Fairfield. Yeah. yeah. I remember sitting over in that part of the, the, uh, the building in what we call the hub conference room and there were some vetting sessions before I was uh, voted in to be your lead pastor and it was three groups of people you were all kind to me. Thank you. Most of you, I think. Uh, but one of, the, one of the main questions people were asking is, what are we going to do about our youth ministry? We don't have a next-gen director. And we've got a lot of teens here. What are you going to do? And I said, I don't, I don't know yet. I'm not in the job yet. But it was really a concern for our church to lean into our next-gen community here and to, th to help them thrive and to grow as disciples. Little did we know that God was already working in the heart of James Fairfield and Haley to come back here to Bethel after being gone for, for a few years. James came back, I believe it was November, and has worked with his team, with uh, J uh, Jared and Mary and all you volunteers, and has really helped our middle school and our high school figure out who they are and begin to move forward as a community of faith. Really grateful for that. Holiday outreach at all three campuses here in Richland, in Prosser with Thanks and Giving, in West Pasco, God was doing a lot of things through those. If you move through to the winter, uh, tons of people showed up for our Christmas Eve services at all three campuses. And if you remember, at least here in Richland, I think the same was in Pasco, the weather was not great. It was snowing, it was icy. I remember coming in thinking, Lord, if you just bring 100 people, that would be great. And the room was not fully packed, but it was packed. People wanted to hear the gospel. They wanted to come and experience church on Christmas Eve at all three of our campuses, and they came. If you remember in January, all three of our campuses, we leaned into fasting and prayer like we've done for the last few years. And we, we prayed and talked about the idea of generosity. Lord, what does it look like to live our lives with our time, our talents, and our treasures generously? And we prayed about it. We heard a series on that. And we began to live generously, maybe more generously than we were in the past. One of the things that came out of that three weeks together, I think, is a renewed and a growing and a deepening of our prayer here at Bethel. I think I've told you in Richland, we've got a group of people praying behind the stage here during worship. We've got the same team that gathers to pray on Tuesdays at the House of Prayer. And by the way, you're all welcome to join that. But there's a growing sense of, of prayer and a, a desire to lean on the Lord in prayer at our church. And that is, that is one of the marks of a Christian church. And that is a good thing and something that God has brought to us not that we didn't pray before, but I think it's an increased desire to pray and to lean on the Lord. Night to Shine happened here, the, just a program that serves our special needs community. I think for the first time in two years, yeah, huge turnout. People volunteering from all of our campuses for that. Mission trips started up again in full swing. You know, COVID pretty much shut down a lot of our global missions. And over the last year, we've seen trips, our mission teams go on a number of trips to our partners. Uh, and not to leave out, in May, we had Global Fest. It's our first time ever having a local fest and a global, uh, global fest in the same year. And you turned out for it. We had Run for Rescue down at the river. A number of you showed up for that. Ran, raised money for Agape International Min uh, Mission Ministries over in Cambodia. We had some dinners here. I think there was about 100 people that showed up in the hub just to hear from our partners, which was really cool to see. The Lord has done some really amazing things through the body of Bethel and in the body of Bethel, despite all the change, despite the transitions. Little did we know, though, in September, when we started Haggai and started thinking about prioritizing God, that God would lead us to think about changing the way that we've done church for 15 years. Uh, Dave Dawson mentioned that we have been a multi-site church since 2008. In fact, in 2008, the West Pasco congregation came up on this stage and we were prayed out to go to West Pasco. And a year later, the Prosser campus was started in Prosser. And we have been what we call one church in three locations for 15 years. And the Lord has worked through that and he has blessed that. The fact that we have 
three churches and two that we can launch out is a testimony again to God's faithfulness and his work in our church over the last decade and a half. But we didn't know in September that prioritizing God would lead us to this place, to send out West Pasco as Imago Day to make new inroads into the West Pasco community, that to reach people that have been unreached. Uh, Prosser is a little bit down the road, but we're working with Prosser right now to, to help them launch as an independent sister church of Bethel to make new inroads into the Prosser community and be able to, to reach people who have been unreached. We didn't know, but the Lord knew. And he's been guiding us through that process. And it's an exciting thing. I've heard from Dave Stevanis in Pasco. I've heard from Brooks in Prosser that yes, in the midst of the heart of all of it, there is a resounding excitement about what the Lord is doing. But I also want to acknowledge that there's also hard in it, right? Change is hard. We, we struggle with change in general. I struggle with change. I'm a pretty sentimental person. So any amount of change is just difficult for me to process through. But even just like not even thinking about change, just the fact that you're launching a church into a new place in a new community and all that goes into that, that's difficult. West Pasco, Mago Day, you can shake your head. It's, it's difficult, right? Prosser, you are beginning those stages. It's difficult. And you know what? Haggai experienced the same thing with the people of Israel, that God can do some good things he can move his people forward into to new seasons, and yet those things can also be difficult as he blesses them. The people of Israel, they came back, they began to build the temple of God, and then some of them looked at the temple that they were building. They said, this looks nothing like the temple that we once had. Like this doesn't have any of the glory of the past. And they were discouraged, discouraged so much that they actually stopped working. There were also a number of outside pressures that were pushing in against Israel and threatening them. Um, kind of apply that directly to church planting. Like there's a lot of pressures that come in as you're trying to launch a church that can make you just want to say, I'm, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. So outside pressures, those internal pressures of just, God, what are you doing? And it looks different, but how do we step into this in faith? And Israel struggled. They really struggled. And so Haggai came on behalf of the Lord saying this, who is left among you who saw the house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Doesn't it seem to you like nothing by comparison? Even so, be strong, Zerubbabel, the leader at that time. This is the Lord's declaration. Be strong, Joshua, son of Jehozadak, high priest. Be strong, not just the leader, not just the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, this is the Lord's declaration. Work, for I am with you. The declaration of the Lord of the armies. This is the promise I made to you when you came out of Egypt, and my spirit is present among you. Don't be afraid. So the people of Israel, they were afraid. They didn't know what was coming. They were afraid that things wouldn't look the way that they, were, that they normally wanted it to look, that there were outside pressures, and yet God comes and says, I'm gonna be with you. My spirit is with you, so work. And I'm actually gonna come dwell with you and I'm gonna do some crazy things that you wouldn't expect. So work, have faith, and watch what I do. And I think that is such a good word, not just for us in September, but also today, Imago Day, as you are about to launch, you already have launched out in West Pasco. Prosser, as you are about to launch out as an independent church. Bethel Richland, as we support and pray and care for these churches, like we need to hear that word. Be strong. Don't fear. This is God's church. God's churches. He's doing something. So as we walk into this next year, trust that God is going with you. God is going before you. The Spirit is working. Dave Stavanis, you've told me for a number of years that Bethel's best days are ahead of them. I think you've said that right. Did I quote you right? I didn't always believe you about that, Dave. But as I look at what God is doing and I, and I, I see what he's doing at all three of our campuses, I, I can actually say, I think not just Bethel Richland's best days ahead, but the West Pasco campus, Prosser as a campus, all of our best days are ahead. And that doesn't mean that what we've been over the last 15 years hasn't been good. It's been good. Yeah, there's hard in there, but it's been great to see what God does. But because we, move, we work with a God and live with a God, who's always moving us towards new creation. As we follow him, he is always moving us into something better than we can expect. And I think that's true for all three of our campuses. 
And that kind of leads me into looking ahead. I kind of got ahead of myself there. Looking back at what God has done, well, what about looking ahead? What's God going to do in the future here at Bethel, at Imago Day, at Prosser? Well, you know this, but I can't predict the future. I don't know exactly what God's going to be doing. But what I do know is that according to the, the word of Haggai, that God will be with us. He's going to work. He's going to do something in our midst that we don't expect. But what we can do is we can plan according to what we believe God is leading us to do. And here's a church, we've been talking about a number called the 3630 for a few different years. 3630, that's 1% of the population of the Tri-Cities in the Lower Valley. And we've been praying and asking the Lord, Lord, what does it look like to be a part of transforming the lives of 300 or 3,630 people? That's our focus this next year as well. Lord, how would you use us, not just in Richland, but in Prosser and in Pasco for the 3630? Here at Richland, that's gonna look like getting behind Imago Day and praying for them and supporting them and asking the Lord to bless that work and to do his thing in Pasco. It's to continue to pray and get behind Prosser as they become whatever they might be called in Prosser. To pray, Lord, would you bless that work? Would you give them vision? Would you give them the resources they need to be able to be a part of that community in a way that they need? So the 3630 for all three of our congregations is to lean into this new work God is doing. You guys are on the front lines. Prosser, you're on the front lines. Richland, like our obligation is to pray and to support. Another thing that God has been doing is, uh, I don't know if some of you know that our gym over here has been renovated by FCA. We have a number of FCA folks that call Bethel home and, and they are beginning a new work of opening up a fitness center in the gym behind the stage. And they've been renovating this and it's about to open this summer. And the heart behind it is to be a place for the community to come, to meet not just individuals who are athletes like them, but also to meet Christians and to let that help their discipleship journey and to bring them in the community of faith. If you remember, we announced a number of months ago that we, we backed that project with a uh, a significant amount of our Cultivate funds to see what God's going to do for the future generation there. So you can continue to pray for that, uh, and we'll, we'll share more information here in the coming months. I think at all three of our campuses, part of the 3630 is inside the walls of our church, and it's our next gen. We've got a ton of next gen at Richland and Prosser and Imago Day. We're going to continue to lean in and to disciple our kids and our, our teens and to love them and to instruct them and to listen to them and to help them follow Jesus in, in a really difficult time to follow Jesus. And I want to ask you, as we're closing here, what is your 3630 this next year? Where might God be calling you to go and who might God be calling you to go to? You put yourself in the shoes of the Israelites. You've got not just your church here, but you have your own lives with whatever's going on there in your families and your workplace. Maybe it's change. Maybe it's a difficult season. Maybe it's a good season. Whatever you're in there, whatever you're in at your church, whatever you're in in your personal walk with God, where is God calling you and us to reach people for Christ with the gospel? And if we can keep that in the forefront of our minds, like we're gonna prioritize your house, God, we're gonna be leaning in, not just for our own discipleship, but we're looking out to the people around us and the places around us, then we're gonna have stories to look back on in 2024 to see what God has done. And that takes all of us trusting God in the words of Haggai, getting to work, trusting the presence of God and working for his kingdom. So with that said, I'd like to invite the West Pasco elders and Scott and Greg up here and the West Pasco, pa Pasco congregation. Would you guys gather up here in this mosh pit area in front of me? The whole congregation, come on up. Well, hey Bethel, how's it going? We have the uh, Pasco Campus Elders, which will be moving to the Imago Day Community Church Elders very soon. We want to give you an update on, on what's going on at West Pasco as we transition out to uh, Imago Day Community Church. As you can see behind us, the campus is what we would call toe up. We've got uh, a lot of work going on here. A lot of work has happened to get this building ready to turn back over to our landlord as we've transitioned over to the theater, which I think is going pretty good. What do you guys think about uh, how the theater is going so far? I think it's been going really well, and I think the, the best part of it has been the amount of volunteer work that's gone into it, yep. how much people have stepped up and taken ownership and really made it happen. Yeah, and that, that's been a great part of it. Uh, interesting thing is we continue to get new people every week. 
which uh, is kind of surprising since we're kind of tucked in there in a soft launch. Yeah, it feels like a fresh start, really. I, I, initially, we kind of thought, oh, we're going back to the theater, but not all of us that are here now were there in the theater back in those days. And so uh, we get to do this uh, as one group. And the energy around that right now is seems really good. Did you guys find that like everybody's expecting bags of popcorn already? <laughs> it's really weird. You know, it's going to the theater, I think, is one of the challenges that I see over there is, you know, we started off over here, we got the comforts of having a building and everything's all set up. And now we go in there and we have to set up, it's like a tent, you know? Set our tent up every Sunday morning and then we have to tear it down. So it's kind of, it brings us as a community together a lot closer, you know? I'm, I'm getting to know people a lot more just working together. Going into this, it was just really daunting because it's like, I don't know how to set up a church or, or, or any of that. And, and then to be able to step back and say, but there's lots of people who do and, and who know how to do those things. It's not on, it's not all us that we, that has to do it. There's lots of people who have those skills and that knowledge and, and are willing to help. How did we come up with the name Imago Day Community Church? Uh, just kind of kept coming to the top as one of our options. We discussed it with um, among our board and, um, and with some court families and stuff like that amongst the the congregation, um, but I mean, we, we started with a list of what 30, 40 names that we worked on whittling down and um, 30 or 40. And there, there were several good ones. There were a few not so good ones as well, I would say. But I have some friends that work at Imago Day in Portland and um, the, the current pastor there and some friends that used to work there, they, they all advised us, don't do that. And I, well, why don't do that? I mean, we want to image, image God well. In our community, we want to image God in our lives. They said, yeah, you got to explain it all the time. So one of the things that we thought, and, and several people came up and said, you know what? The ability to explain that starts those gospel conversations possibly with people. We, we need to go find the people that Jesus misses. And I'm not saying that he missed people. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that we need to go find those people that Jesus longs to be in his church. I think how I've seen God working is that there's a missional focus of our body and that's been present since we first talked about this idea of launching is people saw more than just wanting to stay together. Um, they really feel there is unfinished business in Pasco yeah. uh, among their neighbors and their community. The uh, ministry partners that we have here have great relationships with schools, uh, with, with some of the other uh, ministries that Bethel overall supports and people want to continue those and want to continue to build those relationships and so that's been encouraging that people have a focus that's out that's beyond the walls of, of this wherever this body lands that's so. true and for a while we were we were working with some of the schools in Pasco providing material help and donations and stuff like that but in the last six months they've started actually wanting volunteers um, from our church so that's that's been an exciting step that um, now there's that face-to-face -face personal contact we can make um, to get more people of our, of our body involved in that. So. You know, for me, I'm just really grateful for all that Bethel has done uh, to, to help us get moving. You know, over the last 13 years, uh, I've had a, a, a great place to work and great people to work with. Um, once, once all this kind of started moving, we figured, well, how's that going to be? And I, you know, my hope is that we continue to have a great relationship with all the people at Bethel. I know Sam Rodriguez and his team, um, the guys filming this video, everybody has pitched in to help us move forward in, in multiple ways. So, you know, if, if there's anybody that out there thinking, oh, well, we just kicked West Pasco out on the curb. That's not true at all. We're excited about what's going on. We're, we're, we're glad to go where God is having us go. Um, I think this group of, of guys together, um, we're, we're doing a, a lot of work together, but we're gonna, we're gonna listen to the Lord and move, move this forward. But we have to recognize that, uh, man, we, we came from Bethel. We're part of Bethel. We're just gonna be a different part now. But so the Bethel elders, all the staff, everybody that's been involved in this, especially the executive team who I've worked real closely with. I, I, I just thank you. We, we are set up well 
to do what we need to do in this next um, this next chapter. And you know, we might come knocking on doors saying, "Hey, can we use a room?" or something like that. But hey, it, it's been great, and I want I just want to say thank you. And then Matthew, you know, been yep. you came up with this idea as, a, as an interim pastor, and that has done Matthew's done a great job. It's not just been his job either. I mean, he has experience in church planting and. He's been exceptional in uh, you know, participating in our elder meetings all along. Going into this, none of us have started a church, as far as I'm aware. Um, so like, we didn't even know what we didn't know and how to even get started. But I felt like so many meetings, whether I was a part of them or not, I just heard that we had a need. And somebody from Bethel was able to help step in and fill that need and help us through the process. Yeah, I think moving forward, you know, there's a lot of challenges that we're going to have to face in West Pasco. I believe we're still the only Christian church north of the freeway, and there's thousands and thousands of people in this area, and, and we want to do what God has called us to do. I mean, we want to do it well, and we want to reach the people of West Pasco, especially, and uh, whether it's the theater or wherever it is, and we can still uh, love people, image God well and glorify God in doing it. All throughout scripture, there are a lot of people that God placed into roles and positions and, and even moved them from one place to another who had no idea that they were gonna be part of such a big story. And you know, some literally went kicking and screaming or saying, no, wait a minute, what? Um, I think maybe we felt a little bit like that at first, but now that, um, you know, now that we're, we're, we're we've grasped on to what God wants us to do. Um, and I think going full force into that, um, we're gonna do just fine. It's, it's not on us. This is part of God's story, it's part of God's plan. He's moving us forward. We just have to follow Him well. So I, I think we're set up to do that. If Lago Day Community Church was a ship, this would be the point at which we would break a bottle over Dave's head. <laughs> but you're not a ship. You're a church of the risen Lord Jesus Christ. And so commissioning this new work, this church, is going to involve two things. It's going to involve a charge for the word, and it's going to involve a prayer of blessing. I'm privileged to do the first. It's got to do the, the second. The choice of the name of Mago Day leads one naturally, I think, drives us to Colossians chapter 1. So I'd like to read Colossians 1, 9 through 20 over you folks, over our brothers and sisters today. And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you will be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who qualified you to be inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. For he, Christ, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things to himself, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. I love the fact that you have chosen Imago Day Community Church as your name and the rationale that was told to me about why that is, about even in selecting that name, which is unfamiliar to folks, it kind of forces itself a gospel conversation, right, to explain what the Imago Day is and its significance for you and for your community. Uh, but Paul charges us to remember that in the first instance, the Imago Day, the image of God, is, is not us. Or, or the people that need to be drawn into his, his care, in the first instance, it's the risen Lord Jesus Christ himself. He is the image of the invisible God. And it's as we conform ourselves to him that 
the Imago Dei has formed in us and that we, God through us, attracts those who are desperate, in desperate need of being formed into the image of God, the community which you folks will serve and care for. Uh, so our charge to you and to ourselves is to keep Christ the center and to abide in him. For as we abide in the image, we ourselves are formed in his image and can attract those to whom God wants to do that same work. Scott. One of the things that we are really keen on doing is, is providing support for West Pasco Amago Day in any way that we can. And one of the ways that we will be doing that is uh, Angie's actually putting together a care and prayer team to, to come alongside and make sure that you guys have what you need from a, from a support point of view to, to go forward. But now we want to take some time to pray specifically for things that may be on your heart, Dave. And so share with us a little bit how we can pray for you. Well, thank you, Scott. Um, I do have to say, though, what Adam said is true. I did say something about the best days of Bethel being ahead of it. I'm pretty sure I didn't mean this. Um, <laughs> and the other thing I want to do, just real, real quick, is I want to say thank you. I, mean, I, I want to say thank you to all you folks. And I want to say thank you to all you folks, too. Just, just having the support in front of us and behind us as a church will help us get there. So I, all of this is going to be okay. It's going to be great. We've got, we serve a great God. So what can we use prayer about? Um, unity. Unity within the Imago Dei Community Church um, as we move forward because, you know, there are, there are still some hard things to do. And it's just hard work is all it is. Um, I would like to pray for unity in our partnership with Bethel. Ongoing partnership, the, the two churches doing well together. Um, I think for, for our community, uh, just this ongoing great sense of community that Imago Day and West Pasco started, it's, it's putting into Imago Day. There's a great sense of community within these folks, so we'd like that. And then... Um, you know, for Imago Day to just have this uh, very uh, high engagement in, out in our community, wherever we go, whatever we do, to reach people for Christ. Those are the three things. Please join me in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for bringing us to this point. It has not been an easy road, and there will be tough times ahead. But we rejoice in the fact that you go before us, that your power is abundant. It's in our individual lives and it's in our corporate lives as well. So Lord, as Imago Dei Community Church launches, we pray first of all for unity within those that are there, that they would love one another and that they would be united on your purposes, knowing that that's the best way to go and that that's what's gonna bring the most glory to you. We also pray, Lord, for our relationship with here at Richland, with Mago Day Community Church. And even though we're not organizationally linked anymore, Lord, we know that there are going to be good friendships continuing and partnerships in ministry. There's lots of possibilities. So may we be united on the purposes that you have for us as, as two bodies. And then finally, Lord, we just pray that you would use these folks to make for kingdom Im impact. May we see your kingdom grow in West Pasco through the love and the labor of these folks that are with us today and those that couldn't be here now. So again, we give you thanks, knowing who you are and that you are utterly trustworthy. And it's in Jesus' strong name that we pray. Amen.